Welcome to what's new in 2024.5 release of Home Assistant. We'll dive into exciting enhancements that will take your home automation experience to the next level. Let's start in a couple of seconds. This video is recorded on the beta release of Home Assistant. Beta 1 is the latest at the time of the recording. So let's get started with new features, and this one is not as packed as previous ones, but there are still some very neat features. Although some of you may have expected strict connections to be the focus of this beta release, no, unfortunately there were some errors discovered just a couple of days before the official release of Home Assistant, so devs have decided to pull out this and push it into the June release of Home Assistant, if everything gets fixed. So let's start with what will end up in the May release of Home Assistant. Let's talk about data organization. As you know, in the previous release of Home Assistant, we received options on how to tag, label, sort things inside the tables. And there are a lot of tables, for example, devices, entities, helpers, automations, etc. And what's new in this release is that now you can group entities by domain. For example, let's go to group by, click on domain, and now the list of your entities will be grouped by domain, air quality, automation, binary sensors, etc. But that's not all. If you go to filters, you can also filter out entities by domain. For example, date time, input number, proximity, and sun. This is great improvement if you have large systems. I think my system has around 1000 entities, so this will help me a lot. Plus also now you can add multiple items to selected area in automations, scenes, scripts, and devices. No, this does not work with entities, and no, you do not even have to try and ask these to be added to entities, because entities will always fall under devices. So when you add device to an area, the entity will also fall to that area. Click this button to allow selection. We can, for example, click on these, and then move to area and select area where you want to move the devices. As I mentioned, this also applies to automations, scenes, and scripts. Now let's look at one quality of life improvement to Automations Editor. If you are creating a new automation, you can on the fly create helpers. For example, add action, then select choose entity, and you figure out that in this list the entity that you want to use is missing. So you click on create new temper helper. This will pop up the same screen that is available in the helper section. You give it a name, recording helper, icon, help, duration, for example, five minutes, and create. We now have new helper called recording helper, and this helper can be used directly in this automation. No need to jump back to and from the helper section. If we search, we see that the helper is available in the helper section. And speaking of enhancements, there is also one quality of life, but this time UI improvement. You can see that locks have been added. You can, of course, improve it by adding features. For example, lock command, open the door, but that's not all. Besides just having green and red as a color representations, some of the Home Assistant users have issues with the colors. So now we have much clearer icon. This one is closed lock, meaning that the door is locked, and this one represents the unlocked door. This will help both users that are visually impaired by not being able to recognize different colors, but also other users to at glance see the state of the lock. Plus, of course, there are other noteworthy changes. For example, there is a new debug mode that can help you detect threat safety issues. Glances has received network sensors and GPU sensor, water heater support, maps for Roborock, etc, etc. We also have a couple of new integrations. Ambient Weather Network allows you to retrieve local weather station information from the Ambient Weather Network. ARV to monitor real-life air quality data, energy power sockets, Epic Game Store for all of you that need to track when the games will be released and when there are sales available on the Epic Store, EQ3 has returned and also Sanix. Three integrations have been moved to UI, Enigma 2, Folder Watcher and LG Netcast. Plus, as always, we have some backward incompatible changes. I always recommend that you go through them and see if any of them impact your system. For example, groups may have impact depending on how you were using them previously. 
EMAP default new entities have also changed. In templates, relative time has been replaced with the two new functions, time since and time until. So don't forget to check the backward incompatible changes. Also, we have one integration that we must say bye-bye to, and that is the Epson workforce. Unfortunately, this integration has had some issues in the past, and when the devs tried to fix it, they've also found out that it is using web scraping. And web scraping is big no-no for internal home assistant integrations. So bye-bye Epson workforce. While this release may not be as big as April or March release of Home Assistant, it still does bring some neat functionality. I am very sorry to see the strict connections so far scrapped. No, they were not scrapped, they were just pulled from the official release until all bugs get squished. It's better to have working functionality later than the one released today with a lot of bugs. What is your favorite thing in this release of Home Assistant? Also, what is your opinion on the state of the open home? What did you like? What you didn't like on the state of open home? And maybe what you didn't understand fully? So I can potentially create a video on that topic. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also check that you are subscribed. And before I end of the video, I really want to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, commented and shared my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or, as always, you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks. And as always, I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then. Bye bye and have fun. Home Assistant now offers enhanced security with strict connections. These work both if you have Nabucasa account or if you do not use or have Nabucasa account. Let me first show you what you can do with the Nabucasa. In the Nabucasa screen of your Home Assistant, under Remote Connections, Security Options, now you have three additional options. First is to leave everything as is. If you are using that functionality and you are accessing your home assistant from unknown device. What unknown device is? It's actually any device that was previously not logged in to home assistant on the local network. So for example, if you already have your phone and if your phone is already hooked up to home assistant and you did it via the local network, no matter what setting you use here, it will not have any kind of impact. Here we are talking about unknown or new devices. For example, if somebody gets hold of your Nabucasa URL or your exposed URL, usually he would see a login screen. There are two additional options now. First one is a show login page. As I said, this doesn't change anything. Even the unknown users will be presented with the login page. The next one is block remote logins. What block remote logins means, that means that anybody trying to access your login page from the outside, from an unauthorized device, will be presented with a static page. Nothing else will be exposed, he will not have access to any web socket or any exposed URL. He will just see static screen, showing him that he needs temporary URL and then information link where he can read more information on what to do next. If you, for example, have a new family member or partner or whatever that you want to share your Home Assistant URL, what you would need to do is create a link by clicking this button here and it will create a temporary link that you can copy. This link will be available for one hour. Then that unknown person accessing Home Assistant via that URL will be presented with the login screen where he can then enter his username and password and access Home Assistant. Since then he will be logged in, that also means that the next time he is accessing the Home Assistant URL, he will not be presented with this blocker page. If you want to take things one step further, there is also option to block remote logins and show nothing. In this case, Home Assistant is pretending to be firewall and when he sees unknown connection or gets accessed by unknown device, he will simply drop the connection. That means that other party will not know if there is a device on the other end or not. This is just a further step on the security enhancement.